Did a freezing glacial apocalypse doom early humans in Europe? New paleoclimate evidence shows that around 1.1 million years ago the European climate cooled significantly, and caused an extinction of archaic humans on the continent. The majority of what we know about hominin evolution is based on fossil evidence, and these fossils come from a world shaped by climate and ecological dynamics. Indeed, the ability to estimate past environments allows us to gain a better understanding of the forces that shaped our evolution. Two studies now reveal details about hominin evolution that fossils alone cannot, by using climate models to estimate past environments and spatial distribution models to predict the occurrence of species. Researchers discovered patterns of interbreeding between Neanderthals and Denisovans, that correlate with climate and environmental change in Eurasia. They also discovered a previously unknown climate-driven depopulation of hominins in southern Europe, during the early Pleistocene, a period of bloody cold weather. The oldest known hominin remains in Europe, dating between 1.5 to 1.1 million years ago, were discovered in Iberia, where paleoenvironmental reconstructions revealed warm and wet interglacials and mild glacial periods, supporting the theory that once established, hominin populations persisted indefinitely. Recently, scientists described evidence of a massive North Atlantic cooling event that occurred about 1.1 million years ago, lasted only about 4,000 years, and appears to have wiped out the entire population of archaic humans who had colonized Europe. Climate envelope model simulations show that early hominin habitat suitability around the Mediterranean decreases dramatically during the this period. Scientists believe that these extreme conditions contributed to Europe's depopulation which may have lasted several glacial-interglacial cycles. Indeed, long before our species, Homo sapiens evolved, other human species spread throughout the world. That dispersal, however, was a circuitous and tumultuous event. Based on fossils from Spain, that species is thought to have been Homo erectus, the first member of the human evolutionary lineage to spread beyond Africa. The species was the first to have body proportions similar to ours, and to make technological advances in stone tools. The extreme glaciation appears to have rendered Europe inhospitable for bands of early human hunter-gatherers, as it deprived them of food resources during the frigid interval, which was comparable in intensity to recent ice ages. Their cold tolerance may have been lacking due to a lack of fat insulation, while creating effective clothing and shelter and finding a way to make fire would have been difficult, according to the researchers. The study sheds light on early human species' vulnerability to environmental changes, and how they eventually adapted to increasing glacial climatic stress. There was probably a complete break in early human occupation of Europe, possibly for a long time, with an entirely new human population eventually returning. It is unknown how many people died in this regional extinction event. Scientists have no idea about population numbers, but they are certainly tiny by modern standards probably in the tens of thousands across Europe. Unlike previously believed the research shows that human occupation of Europe was not continuous, but rather was punctuated by at least one regional climate-induced extinction. An examination of the record of human fossils and stone tools in Europe also reveals a 200,000-year gap in human occupation, beginning 1.1 million years ago. If this is correct, Europe may have been re-colonized around 900,000 years ago by more resilient humans with evolutionary or behavioral changes that allowed survival in the midst of increasing glacial intensity. The researchers based their reconstruction on organic compounds, left by tiny algae and pollen content in a deep-sea sediment core drilled off the coast of Portugal, which revealed temperature and vegetation changes. They ran computer simulations to see how the effects would affect human habitats, and average air temperatures dropped by about 8 degrees Fahrenheit, or 4.5 degrees Celsius. Homo erectus established a foothold in Eurasia and, later, southern Europe relatively early in its history, according to fossils and stone tools. Homo erectus remains have been discovered in Georgia beginning about 1.8 million years ago, with stone tools discovered in Italy and Spain about 1.5 million years ago, and incomplete human fossils, most likely of this species, discovered in Spain dated to between 1.4 and 1.2 million years ago. Nevertheless, the human species that later colonized Europe proved more resilient in the face of persistent glacial conditions. Homo antecessor is known from fossils found living in Spain around 850,000 years ago, while Homo heidelbergensis was discovered living in Germany around 600,000 years ago. 
Meanwhile, early Neanderthals were discovered in Spain around 430,000 years ago. Now, archaeological sites in northwest Spain and Kent England has unearthed an unusually high density of giant hand axes dating back 300,000 years. The discovery of these hand axes suggests that different populations were using different types of stone tool technologies at the same time, lending credence to the idea that a prehistoric, Game of Thrones scenario existed as Neanderthals emerged in Europe. According to scientists, the fierce battle for survival and territory among disparate Neanderthal clans may have led some ancient humans to evolve certain physical traits faster than others, and to create mysterious giant hand axes. The origin of an accumulation of bones and hand axes could be described as one of archaeology's greatest mysteries. A group of mysterious ancient humans, with large jaws and small brains lived in what is now Spain around 430,000 years ago. Seventeen of their skulls, discovered in the Atapuerca Mountains pit of bones, helped to answer complicated questions about the evolution of ancient humans. More painstaking DNA extraction work may help to shed light on the events that led to their deaths. As a matter of fact, fossil records show that multiple human lineages lived in Europe around the same time period, lending credence to this theory. It should be noted that England, along with Ireland, were connected to mainland Europe during low Ice Age sea levels, significantly expanding the territory in Western Europe. While more human fossil and stone tool sites need to be reliably dated across the region, a picture of a turbulent Game of Thrones-style scenario of hominin evolution in Eurasia, during the Middle Pleistocene period appears to be emerging. For those who haven't seen the show, several clans fight for control of their lands, while an ancient foe awakens after millennia of dormancy. The Acheulean toolmaking tradition probably originated in Africa around 1.7 million years ago, and vanished by 500,000 years ago. The type of Acheulean tools are unique to Southwest Europe, implying that the technology was brought in by a new human population from Africa or the Middle East. The age is consistent with previous findings that suggest the Acheulean culture expanded in the region. This latest discovery adds to the increasingly complex narrative emerging from ongoing studies of European human fossils, namely that human groups of different origins and evolutionary stages coexisted across the continent, during the emergence of Neanderthals. Although early Neanderthals have been found in Spain, other humanoid types have also been discovered there, complicating the simple scenario of one species gradually evolving into another. Among the discovered items were two enormous flint knives, described as giant hand axes. The archaeologists defined hand axes as stone artifacts that have been chipped or napped on both sides, to produce a symmetrical shape with a long cutting edge. These stone tools may have served a specific purpose in early human society or they may have been associated with specific human groups, or even human species, expressing distinct cultural identities during a specific period. The two largest hand axes discovered at the site have a unique shape, with a long and finely worked pointed tip, and a much thicker base. Researchers refer to these tools as giants when they are longer than 22 cm in length, and there are two in this size range. The largest, measuring a whopping 29.5 cm in length, is one of the longest ever discovered. Hand axes are a subset of the larger biface group of two-sided tools or weapons. Hand axes are widely assumed to have been used primarily as cutting tools, with the wide base providing an ergonomic area for the hand to grip the tool, though other uses, such as throwing weapons and using as social and sexual signaling, have been proposed. Curiously, these massive hand axes, which date back over 300,000 years, are so large that it's difficult to imagine how they could have been held and used effectively. Perhaps they served a more symbolic or less practical function than other tools, demonstrating strength and skill. While we don't know why such large tools were made or which species of early humans made them, we can still speculate. The site in England is thought to date back to a time when Neanderthals and their cultures were first emerging and they may have even competed in the landscape with other early human species. At the time, the region would have been a wild landscape of wooded hills and river valleys, home to red deer and horses, as well as less familiar mammals like the now-extinct straight-tusked elephant and lion. Further scientific analysis will help understand why the site was important to ancient people and how stone artifacts, such as the giant hand axes, helped them adapt to the challenges of Ice Age environments and beat off competing species. Now, research on 17 skulls from a collection of 430,000-year-old mortal remains, 
disinterred from the bottom of an underground shaft in Spain, suggests that pre-Neanderthals' first distinguishing feature was large jaws. Their large mandibles could gnaw meat, open wide, and be used as a tool, assisting them in adapting to their eating needs in a harsh, bloody cold environment. Remarkably, about 430,000 years ago during an interglacial period, it was so warm, large parts of Greenland were ice-free. In fact, scrubby tundra basked in the sun's rays on the island's northwest highlands. Evidence suggests that a forest of spruce trees, buzzing with insects, covered the southern part of Greenland. Global sea level was also much higher back then, between 20 and 40 feet above today's levels. According to the study, the fact that their skulls were compact, indicating a small brain, shows that the development of the massive brain seen in Neanderthals occurred later in the evolutionary process, and was not present in the last common ancestor. The individuals were young adults when they died, raising a slew of unanswered scientific questions. Most importantly, how did they die, and how did they get to their final resting place at the bottom of the cave shaft? Scientists believe their conquerors may have thrown them, ceremoniously or not, into the pit. The big unanswered question is whether the perpetrators were the same species, or another species entirely. As stated earlier, paleoanthropologists believe that the Game of Thrones scenario accurately depicts hominin evolution in Europe during the Middle Pleistocene. As in the famous series, there was no unified and uniform kingdom, but rather a number of clans, living in different regions and frequently competing for territory. Some groups were related, such as members of the same extended family, while others were UN-related. Because early humans, or hominids, were isolated in different clans, the long process of adapting their traits to their new environment occurred in fits and starts. Human evolution was not a gradual and slow evolution of the entire population, across the continent at the same rate. It is now clear that not all Neanderthal characteristics evolved at the same rate. Yet, mitochondrial DNA on one of the bone fragments demonstrates that these individuals were not true Neanderthals. Their skeletons were discovered to have lived approximately 200,000 years before the classic Neanderthals. It's possible that they're all part of the same clan, or they are all of the same species. They are related to one another, because they are members of the same biological population. According to a skull analysis published in the journal Science, our ancient cousins, the Neanderthals, evolved their distinctive facial features before their large brains. The prominent nose and mouth of their Neanderthal descendants, who lived in Europe until about 40,000 years ago, are visible in these skulls, but the brain cases match those of more primitive humans. This pattern of staged evolution is consistent with the accretion model, which states that hominids evolved in isolated groups. In this scenario, the Neanderthals did not develop all of their distinguishing characteristics at the same time. Rather, different groups of these hominids adapted their characteristics at different times. There was no unified and uniform European Middle Pleistocene hominin group. Within their limited gene pools, these small, isolated populations could have evolved distinct traits relatively quickly. Furthermore, if these early humans were truly like their Game of Thrones counterparts, they would fight for their survival. However, a thick crust of ice spread over a large portion of the disputed land on a regular basis. As Glacier retreated across Europe, these ancient humans faced the choice of migrating south with the changing habitat or facing extinction in the coming Ice Age. Winter was on its way, and it came many times during the Stone Age. Because the skulls were discovered in southern Europe, these humans were most likely not facing extreme climate challenges. Yet, as the earliest definite group with Neanderthal traits, they shed new light on the nature of Neanderthal evolution. Therefore, the evolution of prominent Neanderthal facial features was not an accident. Because the majority of these characteristics emphasize a distinct chewing mechanism, researchers believe they were an adaptive trait. These humans most likely used their front teeth as a third hand, grabbing and pulling at large chunks of meat. People who could do this most effectively would survive to reproduce more frequently over generations. These individuals could also open their mouths much wider. The condyle, the point on the bottom jaw where it joins the top, is much lower than in earlier humans. As previously discussed, their big mouths were not matched by big brains. In fact, the morphology of the brain case is quite primitive, unlike later Neanderthals have larger skulls with an occipital bun, which protrudes at the back. Recent research has shown that adult Neanderthals had cranial capacities comparable to modern humans. 
the humans discovered in Spain, on the other hand, appeared to have much smaller brains. Furthermore, the skulls will eventually require a new name in order to be placed more accurately in the human family tree, though this issue has yet to be resolved. Meanwhile, Neanderthals should no longer be considered among the first early humans to live in cold environments, as they once were. The mortal remains are also distinct enough from Neanderthals to be classified as a separate taxon, according to the study. The scientists' unwillingness to classify the remains reflects one of the most pressing emergent issues in human evolution. How do we deal with distinct evolutionary lineages that retain reproductive abilities in the presence of other lineages? Anthropology has several distinct taxonomic names for what are thought to be the various species of ancient humans in Europe, including Homo erectus, Homo heidelbergensis, and Homo neanderthalensis, but scientists are hesitant to classify these new skulls among the existing terms. Nevertheless, although Neanderthal evolution does not directly reveal anything about our our species, there is something by comparison. Neanderthals have been shown to have deep roots in the European Middle Pleistocene, but Homo sapiens do not. Perhaps this is due to a lack of a good fossil record in Africa, compared to Europe, because early Homo sapiens lived in a warm climate, while Neanderthals shivered and died in the bloody cold caves of Europe. There is a fossil record in Africa, where Homo sapiens are thought to have originated, but it is not as extensive as the fossil record in Europe during the same time period. The earliest fossils that can be considered early Homo sapiens date back around 300,000 years in Morocco, which have a modern-looking face, but the jaw and brain case of Neanderthals. Nevertheless, we continue to debate and reconsider how humans are divided and designated. This is one of the major issues, what, exactly, is it that distinguishes us as humans? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and as always, please watch our other videos to learn more about human evolution. Thank you for watching.